One night, I was called away from home because my television station went off the air. When I got there, the transmitter status showed that it was due to a VSWR trip. For those not familiar with RF, VSWR stands for Voltage Standing Wave Ratio. It is a ratio of the power going to a load, such as an antenna, and the amount of power being reflected back from it. It's expressed as a ratio. A ratio of 1 to 1 would be a perfect match. Transmitters are designed to shut off their RF output if the VSWR ratio, or reflected power, becomes too high. Here you can see a large amount of forward power and a smaller amount of reflected power going back towards the transmitter. Turning the RF back on caused an immediate VSWR trip. Using the exciter controls, I found I could run the transmitter at 10% power with very low reflected power. Our normal power is 20 kilowatts, so 10% is just 2 kilowatts, with about 20 watts reflected. At this point, it seemed to be a transmission line fault, with a bad bullet perhaps. I did attempt to look at our 8 VSB signal, but the only equipment we have is the exciter itself, and it was not providing any useful information. I thought it was because the levels were too low. The next morning, I went looking for a bad section of transmission line, starting with the most likely suspects, the elbows. I followed the transmission line up to the combiner room. This is where our RF signal enters a mask filter, RF switch, channel filter, and a combiner that allows it to be broadcast on a common antenna. This is where I found the one elbow that was slightly warmer than the surrounding transmission line. It was only one and a half degrees warmer by comparison. It's not much, but it's the only thing we had. I took the elbow apart and examined it. Nothing looked bad, but to be on the safe side, I replaced it with a spare that was on hand. But the new elbow did not fix the problem. It was then that someone suggested that we check the reject loads on the mask filter. The mask filter removes unwanted sidebands from the 8 VSB signal. A faulty reject load would unbalance the filter, causing it to reflect the incoming signal and causing the transmitter to shut off. When I tested the reject loads, I found one was shorted. More testing revealed that it was the coax cable that was shorted and not the load. A shorted coax cable on the reject load would unbalance the mass filter and thus cause the transmitter to trip off. But after replacing the cable, the transmitter still suffered from VSWR trips. Something else was still wrong, and that's when I looked at the exciter, or rather the back of the exciter, and checked its cooling fans. I found they were not running, so the exciter was becoming overheated. The cause was a blown fuse on the fan tray. This fan tray did not have any pilot light, so there was no way to know if it was running. With the exciter cooled down and the fans running, we returned to air at full power. Cutting open the RG214 coax, I saw the problem. The center conductor had migrated to where it made contact with the shield. When the fans failed, the exciter overheated and the 8 VSB signal had spread out. This produced much more energy in the sidebands. These sidebands would normally have been dissipated in the reject loads. But at this higher power level, it overloaded the coax interconnect cable, causing it to overheat. The hot center must have melted the dielectric, allowing it to move. Then the center migrated at the point where the coax was bent, allowing it to touch the shield. So the coax cable acted as a fusible link. 
it was suggested to install rigid coax to connect the reject loads. But that could lead to the loads failing. And coax cables are much cheaper than a new load. A thermometer has been installed to monitor the temperature of the air above the exciter fans. I have made a note of the normal temperature, which is about 75 degrees. Here's a quick checklist to follow if you experience a VSWR fault. First, you should check your transmission line with a network analyzer. If one is not handy, the next thing would be to check the transmission line for hot spots, especially at the elbows. Test any reject loads on filters that are installed in the line. And don't forget to check your exciter's output, making sure it's working properly and within its band.